This site is really very important because it's basically the first factory in the country. It produced silk from when it opened in the 1720s all the way through to the early 1900s. The silk mill was the largest employer in the town by far. If you can compare that to today's times, the number of people working in the silk factory here is on a par with the kind of numbers working at Rolls-Royce. The technology was stolen from the Italians, the raw material, the silk, came from places like Italy, France, but also further afield from China as well. And not long after that, the finished products from industries in Derby were going out to far corners of the world. The pioneers on this site really knew a good opportunity when they saw one. And that's what we really need today, I think. We need people who are capable of picking up the raw materials that are in front of them, rearranging them in an imaginative way, and using that to, to boost innovation in the future. Now that Bombardier is part of a, a global group, we operate with resources all over the world. That means we're able to share expertise around the company. And we do that in engineering, where we have engineers here developing work, which we then package and send to our design centre in Hyderabad overnight. And it then, come the following morning, is back with us to carry on working. The team in Hyderabad is, is great for us because not only do we have access to a really top quality bank of skills in engineering there, but also it enables us to work through the night. It helps us to contribute to projects on a worldwide basis. We've been investing a lot of money in developing new technologies and new systems for improving uh, energy performance of, of our trains. Systems which will help train operators to see real savings in their energy bills. I started here as an apprentice um, the company pushed me and pushed me and pushed me to further my education. Um, I ended up getting a, a master's degree in, in business, which um, I was really pleased to get. In a typical project that we're delivering for the UK, we'll have 200 suppliers around the country. Uh, about a third of those will be in the East Midlands region. So that's 60 or 70 businesses locally that are supporting us to deliver contracts. We're an engineering business and we're going to need more and more engineers. Really good, top quality engineers who can work in a tough commercial environment. We've got some large companies here like Rolls-Royce, like Bombardier and like Toyota who are looking at taking students on at 16 with a view to educating them and taking them on and, and through the routes within that company. We have a history of people who've gone through Rolls-Royce and done very, very well and we can cite those as good examples. Probably 20 years ago it was all about work experience, you know, one week's work experience in industry and that was about the lot and now we're looking at real curriculum projects, real qualifications in genuine partnerships with industry um, and increasingly with further education colleges as well. I think any relationship from business for schools and children is highly valuable because it actually gives them a real purpose, a sense of uh, an end game to, to their studies. We certainly see ourselves as part of a global market. There are the multinationals and then there are the small SMEs like ourselves. Uh, and I think they all have had something to learn and something to gain from globalisation. Most of the products that we make are for either operating theatre or intensive care units that every operating theatre around the world will need. All these products could easily be made in a lower price economy in China, in India, and they are to some extent. And whereas we may be automating a, a lot of our production, they will still be doing it much more cost effectively with people who are paid very low rates, but who are doing it manually. The biggest change that this company has seen in, in 20 odd years has been our investment in lean manufacturing, taking out waste, reducing it. But I can't pretend to you that we can compete everywhere around the world purely on price. But we feel what we can offer, in addition to good quality, is we can be responsive, we can offer short deliveries, we can offer modifications to products depending what our customers want. We pride ourselves on an excellence in customer service. Exports are currently still about 38-40% of our turnover. I think when I last counted up we sold in the, the previous years to about 55 different distributors over well over 40 countries worldwide. It's thanks to exports really that we've 
adapted products and grown so much the product range. Uh, we've looked at so many ways of satisfying the customers and, and their needs are dif different from one market to another. So that's been really exciting. To play on a global stage, to be sustainable, you've got to be enormously enthusiastic. You've got to think that every little piece of business, every order that comes through the door, whether it's for 50 pounds or for half a million pounds, you've got to think that is something precious and that there's somebody out there who wants that business. And if they're given any opportunity, they will take that business from you. Westfield's an Australian company. It's actually the biggest shopping centre owning company in the world. It was a £340 million investment to build the new centre here. We've also enabled Derby's um, retail spend to go up by £245 million. There were 3,000 new jobs created in the centre. We actually employed 600 through an initiative with Workstation who helped us look to particularly employ people from deprived areas. So we feel that has had a really positive knock-on effect. There's now a lot of investment in the UK by these um, international brands who are looking for expansion beyond their home markets. Quad is a centre for art and film. Our aim is to make art and film accessible to everyone. There is always lots of things to see and do here. Since we opened in September, we've had over 150,000 visitors through the door. What we do is foster an environment where creativity and talent can really flourish within, within a city. We believe that we need to be rooted in Derby and very deeply connected to the people and the place of Derby, but we also want to speak to the world as well. In terms of the, the knowledge economy, the, um, the digital economy, that whole world, that all that is about one form of creativity or another. And what places like Quad do is to make that creativity uh, visible and it's a point where people can look to to find out what's going on and to, and to get inspired. Yeah, first time, take one. The Drifters, one of the biggest selling groups of all time are back. Frygate Studios is a creative hub building for Derby, so lots of various creative businesses are in here, lots of small businesses. You've got animators in here, you've got web designers, filmmakers. Here at Word of Mouth Creative we produce anything audio mainly radio commercials. Live at London's Indigo 2 on the 20th. We're based in Derby, but none of the people we actually work for are actually in Derby, believe it or not. They're all over the place. In, in the old days, you wouldn't be able to reach these people. I mean, I, you can do a, sit in there and do a voiceover for a, a radio station in Sierra Leone, and it's bizarre to think that me sat in Derby will be doing a voiceover that will be going out in Sierra Leone the following day. Basically, a few years ago, you would leave school, serve an apprenticeship, and then serve a job the whole of your life, uh, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, in recent years we've seen lots of small businesses spring up from people who thought they'd had jobs for life but then find they don't, so they had to go out and do something of their own, and which is exactly what we did. Derby as, a, as an economic centre uh, is, one could say, fortunate in that many of its uh, companies that are located in the, in the region uh, are very international in their outlook, likes of Rolls-Royce, Toyota. Bombardier, Citibank and so on. The agenda for today's um, companies is changing. Globalisation, the impacts of that are, are felt everywhere. But one of the things that we'd like to be doing clearly is helping transfer the skills that, that those bigger companies have into some of the smaller ones to help them compete. It's interesting to note that in this, this current recession cycle, companies have taken a different view towards what they're cutting back on and what they're not. Um, we're seeing a lot more companies working um, very collaboratively with their employees uh, and saying as in past times, maybe training would have been one of the first budgets to be cut. Um, this time, I think people are saying, actually, we need to use the opportunity of a maybe downturn in demand um, to train our staff into areas that we think will be important when the economic cycle returns to, uh, to growth. And one of the key differentiators for an economy that simply can't rely on its uh, natural assets, its natural resources, uh, is to obviously trade on its, its skills. If you can foster a spirit of entrepreneurialism, um, creativity and innovation, and those are the skill assets that will really help us um, be successful as an economy going forward in the 21st century. Yeah.